Hey, hello and welcome to this really fun tutorial by Flowmotion. Because today I'm going to show you how to shrink yourself. So just follow me into After Effects. And if you have clicked on this because you wanted to learn how to shrink yourself, great. But this tutorial will also show you a super advanced way of 3D tracking. So tracking shots that the After Effects tracker cannot handle. And if you only want to see that and be super impressed, I have set a bookmark for you so you can save some time. Well, and you also miss a lot of knowledge along the way. You decide. First things first. You may have seen my music video where I placed myself as a tiny version throughout the whole scenes. And I originally shot this one in 2012. That means I tracked all of this in 2D with the help of Mocha. And we will quickly do that too today, just to show you that workflow. But as over the last 12 years a lot has happened, I will show you an improved new way to easily do those kinds of shots in a way more efficient way. But no worries, the first Mocha method will still be something that fits perfect in your VFX arsenal. So, I have filmed this scene here with my Canon ESR 5C. And I shot it with a fast shutter, so I have less motion blur, which will help a lot with the tracking later. And to get the timing right, I had the music play in the background while shooting. Okay, the plate shoot is done. Now I need to film the green screen clips. And I want the light to match, obviously. So I simply place the green screen directly next to my table and use the same camera and same settings for filming. Now everything should line up directly. Oh, and as you see, I filmed all of this with the camera 90 degrees rotated, so I have an even higher resolution, which should help a lot for the keying quality. So, the clips are keyed with the key light, and as I always have the same issue, like green tattoos, I also rotate parts with the roto brush tool. And for a faster workflow, I rendered them out as separate elements. So, add them to the render queue, and simply use a preset. High quality with alpha seems to match my needs perfect. Now, how do I get that to follow my camera movement? My old method was a planar track, so tracking the position where I want to stand. But the first issue, I had to predefine that. No easy way to change that later. So let's open up Mocha within the effects and presets. Click on the logo to open it up and define an area where I want to stand later on. A planar surface, as this is a planar tracker and you guessed it, track this area. Once done, I can close Mocha and in the effect within After Effects, I can create the tracking data. I want transform, position, scale and rotation and paste this onto the clip or even better on a null object. In this way, I can do all the transformation on the asset itself without messing up all the track keyframes. So let's parent one of my pre-rendered clips with the pick whip to the null object and done. And indeed, this works just perfect. I'm sticking to the area I just defined, but unfortunately only to that area. If I move to another spot, this is a total mess. So, what I did 12 years ago is that I tracked each part, each clip, each position separately. And yes, this took weeks. But as we work smart and not hard, a 3D track works way better. Why? Because this recreates our camera for us and I can simply place stuff everywhere in the scene and as much as I want and it will always work. I can place it here or there Hey, even bring in 3D assets like this drum set and that would just not be possible in 2D. Okay, okay, impressive, but how do we get there? Hmm. We could try the After Effects tracker and that could work. But hey, I wanted to show you something that is not working because I want to show you what to do then. 
because if everything works by default, you don't learn anything. So After Effects is pretty good in 3D tracking one scene, but this is basically one scene on the top, one in the middle of the shelf and one on my table. Hmm. So time to get a bit more professional. And this is exactly what Mocha did. In the professional 2024 version, we now have a 3D tracker integrated, which you find under the camera solve tab. So let me quickly run this with default settings. I just have to click on solve and this really goes super fast. It has already finished while I was talking. Now, when I scrub through this, you can see that we have a lot of feature points that it has detected. And I can also go into the 3D space with my camera here and see the points in 3D. Great! But okay, yeah, a bit hard to see it in context. Hmm. Give me a second. We can set a minimum and maximum value for the tracked features here. And now I do a workflow that is not recommended. But if you are crazy enough, just follow me. I crank up the minimum and maximum amount to, to a lot, like 200 and 600, which will of course slow everything down a bit. I select a few points on the table, click on Align to Ground to have my axis aligned. Then I choose one point as the origin to be my 000, zero, zero origin of the scene. Like a flat layer with no extra position adjustments. And no worries, I will create exactly that in a minute, so you see what I mean. But I am now able to bring in elements and simply have their Y position on zero and everything will line up. So if I watch this in 3D space, I see what a fabulous job Mocha has done here. There are so many points now that I can see the skulls on the shelf, the table and really get a sense of the whole scene. And if you squint your eyes, you can see the whole scene in Matrix style. Well, that's indeed mind-blowing. When I bring this into After Effects, now it automatically creates a camera for us, as well as all null objects for each track point, which would simply be an overkill now. A few hundred null objects will probably make After Effects explode. So I click on those that I need, like one for each position where I want to be later on, and a few for the table. And over here I have a list of all of them and let's just color code them to red so I find them later on. And now it is super easy to disable all the others because in that way I can go back to Mocha at each point in time if I need a new point and simply enable that one. All data is still stored but I only work with the essentials. I can now click on export and select to export only the visible ones. Now I can copy it to the clipboard, close Mocha and in After Effects go to Edit and all the way down here paste Mocha Camera. And voila, we have a camera and all of our selected null objects. As mentioned, I create a solid, make it 3D, rotate it flat and as also mentioned before, I can set its Y value to zero and now it sits directly on the table. And this is super helpful when I'm now going to place my pre-keyed asset that I of course now also turn into a 3D layer as I can align the feet to the table now. And I can place them wherever I want. It simply matches. Same goes with the 3D drum set or maybe even some amplifiers, you know? Rock and roll! Rock and roll! Maybe we switch out a few of the guitar players with different ones or at least different takes. And if you think about purchasing Mocha Pro because you want to have the advanced 3D tracker, I have to tell you that you will also get a super powerful planar tracker as well as a mesh tracker with this one. Oh, and I didn't even mention that you can use the planar as well as the mesh tracker to make the 3D solve even more accurate or to focus on specific parts of your scene. And there's a link especially for you in the video description. To finalize this, I'm opening up the beta version of After Effects, as shadows and depth of field are not in the standard version at the moment. But you can do the same if you don't have the beta version installed. Just go to your Creative Cloud app, where you find all your installed apps, and down here, where it says beta, you can also install all beta versions. Okay, let's add an environment light 
and add an HDRI image to it to lighten the scene with that. And I of course chose an image of an interior room. I could even create an HDRI of my living room and use that. And now the floor catches some shadows. And the cool thing is, you can set it to only accept shadows. This is just perfect for compositing. Speaking of compositing, let's add some depth of field and motion blur to this. So let's pre-comp all of this, well, except our background plate, as this is not 3D. First of all, we can simply add pixel motion blur to this now. And I will only add a bit as I shut this with a fast shutter anyways. But here comes the fun part. Let's duplicate our 3D comp and add the 3D channel extract effect to this. In that way, we can create a depth mat. And yes, as you are used to in a professional world, you can use that to drive a camera lens blur effect on your layer. Now it is just your patience and keyframing skills to match this to the original plate. And I have nothing more to add to this. And please let me know in the comments if this 3D workflow is not the best time saving solution you have ever seen. And also let me know if you have questions or suggestions because guess what? I will answer all of them. And for now I wish you a lot of fun 3D tracking your scenes in Mocha Pro and After Effects.